Welcome to Your Florida Lawn, the environmentally friendly way to grow and sustain a Florida-friendly landscape. Your host is Dr. Lori Trenholm, residential turf grass specialist with the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. Join Lori and her special guests as they offer tips and solutions to maintaining a Florida-friendly lawn. Northwest Florida is a wonderful place to live. With its diversity in soils, climate, and growing season, it does vary from much of the rest of the state of Florida. With us here today is Dr. Brian Unruh from the University of Florida's West Florida Research and Education Center. He's one of our turf grass specialists for the state. So Brian, what grasses are well suited for home lawn use in this part of the state? Well, the predominant lawn grasses that we grow here, of course, are St. Augustine grass, Bahia grass, a little bit of zoysia grass, and as we have behind us in this subdivision here is centipede grass. North Florida has different climatic and soil conditions than the rest of Florida, and this alters the growing conditions that the lawns have to deal with. Most of our warm season grasses can adapt to North Florida conditions, but one grass that will do very well in North Florida and is used quite a bit is centipede grass. So Brian, we're looking at some centipede grass here, and this is the predominant grass used in Northwest Florida. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, centipede grass is often described as the poor man's grass, and that's just simply because it doesn't take a whole lot to make a nice looking lawn. So you don't want to overmanage it with too many chemicals or too much fertilizer. That's correct. We uh, typically see as you drive through a neighborhood, if you see a nice dark, lush green centipede grass lawn, you can, you can bet that they're, being, they're putting too much into the lawn. So how should we fertilize this grass? When should we apply fertilizer and how much do we want to be applying? Well, the general rule of thumb on centipede grass is to not apply fertilizer before, say, income tax day or around April 15th. That allows us to get past those green and brown uh, green ups that we have so oftentimes right. in the spring here. And then do you need to fertilize again during the middle of the summer or are there other tactics you might use? We really don't need another complete fertilizer, something that has nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium until maybe later into the summer a little bit. Okay. And when should our last fertilizer application go out? Well, my recommendation in North Florida region and, and really across the Florida panhandle is to not apply fertilizer after about the, uh, the mid to late uh, September uh, timeline, unless you're putting down more of a potassium product, which is, just allows us to, to have a little bit of a push through the winter months. But you don't want to be applying a nitrogen-based fertilizer too late in the year. That is correct. That just leads to a lot of winter kill and a lot of what we call centipede decline, which looks good in the fall, but the next spring we see these big dead patches in the lawn. And the centipede grass decline is actually uh, triggered by too much nitrogen over time. That's correct. Overmanagement. When we tend to put too much fertilizer on, um, improper mowing, improper watering, all of it leads to a decline of the turf. And, and uh, in the spring, you're very disappointed with, with what you do. And so typically, most homeowners will tend to uh, put more on trying to, to fix those problems, which just actually causes this whole thing to spiral down. So just be aware that this is going to be a slightly lighter green color than some of the other turf grasses that we have. Yes, the, genetically, centipede grass is a yellow green grass. Um, what problems with insects does centipede grass have? Probably the largest in this is just really in the last several years is an insect called the two-lined spittle bug. It's a little black insect with two red lines on his back and he basically comes along and he pierces the leaf blade and sucks some of the sap out and causes the leaf blade basically to die. And that can be a problem during the growing season, during the summer months? Typically during the summer months, especially when we get into those late afternoon showers that are coming along, because this insect really prefers the moist, uh, shaded areas of the lawn. So Brian, what other lawn grass species can we use in northwest Florida? Other grass species, of course, include St. Augustine, which is our predominant lawn grass across the rest of the state of Florida. We typically are going to want to use a few different varieties, varieties like Raleigh or Palmetto, those that tend to be more acclimated to the colder weather and the colder climates. Okay. And then zoysia grass is really uh, starting to, to make its impact on our market up in this region as well. So, centipede grass can be called the poor man's grass. Um, fewer chemical inputs, maybe not as nice a green a lawn, but boy, you know, that's not a bad choice. Not a bad choice at all. Thanks, Dr. Unruh, for sharing your expertise with us on centipede grass. For the University of Florida IFAS Extension Service and Florida Friendly Landscaping, I'm Dr. Lori Trenholm with your Florida Lawn.
Thank you for joining us for this segment of Your Florida Lawn. For more information on how to maintain your Florida-friendly landscape, please visit our website or contact your local University of Florida County Extension office.